Hi guys, Ross here, and I know it's been a minute, but welcome back to another video. So I'll save you guys all the details of why I haven't been active on this YouTube channel, but kind of the short story is that I've been super active over on Patreon, creating in-depth and advanced tutorials every month for Cinema 4D and Redshift, and that's kind of taken up all my time. But what I want to start doing is taking snippets from those videos and bringing them here to YouTube so that they are accessible for as many people as possible. So what you're going to be watching today is a snippet from a feedback session I recorded a couple years over on Patreon for one of the members. They sent me a project file they'd been working on, it's this bottle render, and they sent me a reference and they just wanted me to kind of look at it and see how we could push it as close to the reference as possible. So we went through lighting, texturing, uh, some rendering stuff, camera work, Kind of the whole process little refinements here and there and what you're going to be watching today is the lighting section from that tutorial which in my opinion is probably one of the more important parts of the 3d process because you can really transform your work with good lighting so this video is going to be packed full of good tips and tricks for you guys to kind of take away and apply to your own work and of course, if you want to watch the full video where we dive into the rest of the process, like I just mentioned, texturing, camera work, rendering, uh, then you can go and check that out on Patreon. But if not, enjoy this video and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. And uh, yeah, I think, think that's everything for me. So uh, get ready to say hello to a past version of myself. All right, see you in a bit. Peace. Okay, here we are, and here we have our reference image. So on the left is Alistair's render, and then on the right is the reference image. One of the kind of key ways to look at how the lighting is set up is if we look at the lid, for example, you can see the left-hand side is in the shade, whereas the right-hand side is super bright, and that tells us that we've got some light coming from the right-hand side, whereas what we have at the moment it's kind of in the right direction, but it's looking a little bit flatter. So we haven't got that extreme contrast in light and shade, which again is helping, or oh, probably aiding us towards having this uh, quite flat image at the moment. So we just wanna add a bit more contrast into that lighting, a bit more directionality. So let's, let's dial that in. So first of all, we've got quite a few lights going on. Let's go through these maybe one by one and we can start to pick apart and see what each light is doing. So we have this right fill light and this really would probably be our key light. So maybe I'll just rename this right key since that is doing the majority of the lighting in this scene. We then have this bottle fill dome light, which looks like it's a grayscale gorilla kind of blurred metal texture, uh, which has given us some kind of like soft diffuse on the left hand side. Uh, let's look at these neck highlights. Okay, that's just giving us some like subtle reflections. Then we have bottle highlights too, which is actually an outdoor HDR. So I would probably, if we're going to create a studio product lighting setup, I would be inclined to use an actual interior HDR just because you do want to keep it real to the actual environment that it would be in if it was real life. So I'd be tempted to either get rid of this or swap it for a different HDR, but we'll disable that for now and just look at this final dome light. And that looks like it's the same dome light, but at a different rotation. So if we combine all of these, this is the image we're getting. So what I would be tempted to do is usually when it comes to lighting, less is more. So if I can achieve the same look in as little lights as possible, then that's a good thing. It's obviously going to make the render times quicker because there isn't as many lights to process, but also it just makes the whole setup a lot easier to, to work with. When you have so many lights doing so many little different things, it can make it a little bit more complicated and usually more complicated than it needs to be. So let's start off with this right key light. Because this is gonna be our key light, I do want it to light the whole scene. So at the moment, we're using this softbox fabric texture, softbox large. So one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna use this to, to light the whole scene. So I'm actually gonna increase the width of this and that should help to just, yeah, fill more of the scene. And then I'm gonna bring it back slightly and maybe just lift it up. And by lifting it up, it's gonna curve around the top of the bottle a little bit more, but now we're kind of losing it towards the bottom. So then I would probably just rotate that down slightly or maybe rotate it back and also bring it back, uh, which is kind of why it's cutting off towards the bottom. So maybe we just need to increase the, the height and potentially the width of this key light. 
let's have a look okay so that's starting to feel more so yeah usually i'll try to just troubleshoot the issue and just see what is affecting it sometimes it can be other objects in the scene but i think in this case it's just a case of the actual size of the light and whilst we're actually talking about the background you can see in in the reference it's quite a soft transition in the background whereas this one you can kind of see that harsh uh transition from light to dark i'm just going to rebuild this from scratch which i think would probably be useful anyway so uh let's have a look let's just make sure it's sitting at the right height there we go that's cool uh, and let's just delete that original one so we can create that same setup pretty easily with a plane and a bend deformer so whilst we have the plane selected let's hold shift and select our bend deformer that will make it a child and increase the strength to 90 hold shift to move in increments of five degrees and rotate this so that it's already kind of on the right angle um, but now we need to increase the y-axis so now we're actually going to get that curvature from the bend. And now we just need to rotate it backwards 90 degrees. So now we've got that bend going on, we can probably just decrease it down and move it back. And obviously now we have not got a smooth background at all. So we can just increase maybe the segments up to 100 on the width and the height. And you can see how when I scale up and down the bend deformer, that's going to affect how smooth that transition is. So I just want to round it out just a little bit just to create a much smoother transition in the background. And you can see already how that's affecting the scene. So I'm actually going to move the plane backwards and then move the bend deformer forward so that it goes higher up and that way it's going to just fill a little bit more of the scene. Now we have adjusted the background and we've moved the light ever so slightly because the light isn't intersecting with the background now like it was a minute ago. We're now getting it light, the background and everything just feels um, illuminated. So we're kind of filling the whole scene as we should be as this is our key light. So I think this is actually working pretty well. I think I want to capture more of the bottom of this uh, bottle with the highlight. So if I was to rotate this back, no, maybe move it closer. Thing is, I can't really move it closer because I want it to fill the whole scene. So let's maybe move it back. So first of all, we're filling the whole scene with light, which is what we want. And then just increase the width of it. So, so there we go maybe move it up a little bit and rotate it forward so it comes over the top. And for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm, I'm going to disable the floor quickly. You can see how when I disable it, it, it lets us catch that little bit of light. So I wonder if we can decrease the width slightly. So you can see, yeah, as we decrease the width of this plane, we're able to catch more of that light towards the bottom of the bottle. And uh, we can just bring this way down as long as obviously we don't see the edge of it in the camera. And as you can already tell, as you decrease the width, if you look at the edge of the bottle, it's going to start to become black because it's got no surface for the bottle to bounce off. So obviously now we've got this black strip because there's no background. So maybe we just need to increase that a little bit just to fill the bottle a bit more. So this looks good. And I think we have achieved a little bit more light towards the bottom of the bottle. It's not obviously perfect, but I think we're already heading in the right direction. So maybe we can just shift this down. And what I actually might do is just put a target tag on this light and target that towards the bottle. And now we can move this light around much easier without uh, having to constantly rotate it and reposition it. So let's have it around about here, I think. So it's kind of arching over the top and let's maybe move it just so it's slightly behind the bottle. And that way we're gonna get more of that contrast in that lid. So you can see as I move it forward, it's gonna fill more of that lid. And that way we've got a little bit more contrast. So I think now we can get away with increasing the width a little bit. And I think I'll just decrease it a little bit. So I'm gonna put the spread down to 0.5 and you can see already that's gonna make that a little bit more intense. And what I'm trying to do is create a nice harsh edge to our highlight at the moment is quite soft. So maybe I'll try a different texture. I'm gonna grab one of their softbox fabric one this is my classic go-to let's try to turn the spread up to one see if that changes anything okay so you can see already that's a bit harsher but now it's a lot weaker so maybe we'll just increase the intensity to kind of balance that back out there you can see now we've got that much like harsher edge to our light which looks good and now we could probably bring it down a little bit and probably i would just dial that back so maybe like eight intensity maybe we'll put the exposure back down to zero Okay, cool. This is looking good. So another thing I'm keeping in mind is that you want to have some sort of gap between the edge of the bottle and the highlight. Otherwise, if you run it right to the edge, obviously we can't anyway because the background's in the way, but it would basically blend the bottle into the background and you want to be able to create some sort of separation. So I'm just going to move that around a little bit and now maybe we can increase the height. 
and see if we can catch her a little bit more towards the bottom but i don't think so so and then we'll just increase that width and i think that's looking good so if we look at our clay render we can kind of see the lighting we're getting and yeah okay so it looks like we've got some temperature in here so i actually want to just get rid of this so i'm just going to set it to color for now because obviously we've added a lot of like cool tones to that light so now you can see we have a white background uh, before we had color and temperature enabled and it had be and it had been increased to 8500 the default is 6500 that would just be like a neutral temperature so that you can see that gives us like a nice clean result if you decrease this number you're going to get a warmer light and if you increase it you'll get a cooler light so we had it on 8500 so the light was quite cool and uh, i think we just want to leave it on 6500 or just change it to color and now we've got a nice clean result so the next thing we'll do is add in some of those reflections we were getting on the left hand side here uh, which we already kind of had going on but as i mentioned we were using an exterior hdr so i'm actually gonna just bring in a new dome light and i'm gonna get a bathroom so at least we're using some sort of interior um, and we'll get some interesting like interior reflections and what i'll do actually is i will disable the key light for now just so i can focus on the dome light so straight away even just rotating it around to the right like this I think that looks good as is. So if we now just turn on our key light, you can see we've got those reflections coming through. Uh, what I'd actually now do is because obviously they're super bright compared to our key light. We just wanna make them a lot more subtle. So I'll drop it down to maybe like minus two. There we go. And now you can see some of those reflections coming through and it's important to make sure you're using the right working space. So we'll set that to scene linear rec 709 sRGB. And now we can enable that key light and this is looking good so straight away if we just compare it to the original uh we have that stronger kind of sense of direction from the lighting with a strong key light on the right hand side and then some subtle reflections on the left and we've also got a much smoother background with quite a just gr like white soft backdrop as opposed to like seeing that harsh kind of change in light okay so that was the lighting section from the patreon tutorial if you want to watch the rest of the process where we dive into texturing the bottle texturing the marble on the floor uh, we dive into some redshift post effects and how we can do that to add some grading to our render and really take it to the next level whilst keeping it all in cinema 4d then feel free to go and check out the patreon page uh, as well as this tutorial, there is about 50 other tutorials on there. You also get access to my exclusive Discord community with other like-minded artists trying to improve their 3D skills, which is a really active community and a great place to be to learn from one another and also just to talk to other people and talk about cinema and talk about other software and just a great place to hang out. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I will drop a link down in the description below. Uh, go check it out, see what I've got to offer and hopefully I will see you over there joining the community of other members. So thank you again for watching and enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.